Welcome back to the great outdoors, everyone. I'm at the deer lease today. I know, you haven't seen it in a while. I haven't either. And that is why we are here today. We are going to discover if my ATV is, is here, uh, possibly in working order, hopefully. Uh, doesn't have anything living in it. And then we're gonna do a little bit of exploring. Now it is turkey season, and I could be turkey hunting right now. I gotta tell you, I didn't even carry a shotgun, don't have a bow. Uh, I am literally here to, uh, to find my ATV. Um, I've left it here since December, uh, so it's been here out here a long time. And uh, we're gonna look a little bit at some water. Uh, there might be some water out here in some of these spring-fed ponds still. I'm not sure, it's been kind of dry, and then hopefully we'll find a couple of sheds along the way, but uh, I did bring a bass rod, and I brought a bunch of tackle, uh, and that's just in my brain. I'm just, I'm just in full fishing mode. Uh, I, I gotta tell you, I know some folks love turkey hunting, they get super excited, but for me, I tried to turkey hunt the last five years, I've gotten one turkey, and I, I've tried doing it a lot. Uh, and it always intercepts this amazing bass fishing, crappie fishing month. Just fishing in general is, is just quite amazing uh, in the month of April. So I always have a hard time with it. I decided to just totally skip it this year unless a turkey uh, wants to walk out when I shut my car door here and uh, I just pop them with the, with the nine piece. Nope. Well, it is here. It is here. I do see it, ladies and gentlemen. Is that the shed where I left it last? The meat wagon, as it is known. This is my Can-Am. It's basically a buck truck, you know. It's, I love this thing. It's, it's such a fun, fun little machine. Great workhorse, but look what we got here. Ooh, flat tire. No idea if this thing is going to run or not. That tire looks good. Yeah, that's a flat one. Yeah, it's a big old flatty right there. Let's, let's open up this. There could be something living in that. Uh, okay, that looks like that. Oh, man. No telling, no telling what is in here. If this thing starts... I'm going to be shocked. Here we go. Oh my goodness. I mean, it wasn't, there was no hesitation. Like it just started up better than it's started ever. Wow. Okay, well, hey. I am uh, I'm surprisingly I'm surprisingly shocked. I've never changed the battery in this thing. It's been sitting forever, hooked up, and it just cranked right up. So that is awesome. That means we're going to be able to explore a little bit today. Yeah, buddy. Explore in comfort. Uh, throw in a fishing pole or two. Ride around, find some sheds, and uh, enjoy the great outdoors. Man, I'm excited. I'm excited about that. How are we gonna fix a flat tire? Well, you know, this is this is Texas. We have a lot of cactus. And I'm pretty used to getting poked by things out here and the tires are no exception. So I have pretty much slimed uh, all the tires, you know, put, put some tire repair stuff in there. I have a repair kit in the truck and something I always keep in my truck is a, a mobile, uh, air compressor a little mini air compressor for this type thing I have a little compartment in my in my Chevy right here this thing right here though will save you in a pinch if you got ATVs boats any kind of trailer you're gonna have flats especially if you're riding around on a Texas deer lease so nice thing about it is I can plug it right into the ATV on the DC plug cigarette lighter plug and uh, we can get her pumped up. Good to go, partners. 
So we got the ATV loaded with, this is how, this is how into turkey hunting I am right now, okay? I brought probably 40 pounds of bass tackle. I only brought one bass pole. I, I brought my new two-piece. This is the two-piece go-to. I've been wanting a two-piece for a couple of years now when we came out with these rods because they're so perfect. Uh, I do a lot of traveling with them. You know, traveling with my long seven, seven and a half foot rod tube. So anyway, going, going to different places, flying, it's great, but also just throwing in the truck or just to keep in the ATV, it's nice to have a two piece. So got the go-to, which is a medium heavy. So I'm trying to decide, do I want to go straight to the pond or do we do a little shed hunting first? I'm thinking we maybe should ride around, make sure everything's working in the meat wagon, give it a, give it a little juice and maybe just see if we can find a couple sheds. It's always cool. Steph loves when I bring home sheds. Uh, we've got two hours till sunset. So let's ride around a little bit, see if we can find some antlers. She feels as good as the day I left her. One of the coolest things about turkey hunting in the spring is just the flowers that you see in Central Texas. Everything is just fully alive. Blue bonnets, Indian paintbrushes. It's a pretty scene. That's about my extent of turkey hunting, is just looking at flowers. Oh, hey. There's a deer blind that I completely forgot about. There's probably a rattlesnake underneath. Looks a little out of commission. I'm just gonna let the spiders and snakes handle that one. The bedding area down here, but I don't know guys. Let me know in the comments if you are good at finding sheds. I basically have to stumble upon them with this grass being thick like it is. And I'm just not good at finding them anyway. But if I'm having to like stumble upon them, that means I can also stumble upon the old no-legged demon sausage, which I really don't want to happen. So let me know in the comments down below if you have any uh, tips or tricks on finding sheds in the spring. I just pulled up to one of the ponds. Thinking a weightless soft plastic is probably the move. <laughs> All right, feed it through the last one, and let's see what we got in our bag of goodies. This is our one of our large totes right here. You can fit so much tackle. This is kind of my uh, my little money bag, everything money bag, just for traveling. And I've also got a box set up for travel dangling. So we've got some weedless wackies in here. It's got frogs, it's got topwaters, got all that fun stuff. If you're only gonna travel with one hook, four aught worm hook or our, or our uh, hammer hook is pretty amazing. You can do so much with it. So I think what I'm gonna put on there, gosh, blazing worm. You know what a weightless, I've never thrown a weightless bandito bug, but I bet you it would stomp their jaws. Just gonna take the old one I've already rigged up and used. See if we can get one on that. It's an undefeated bait right there, but I don't recall ever fishing it weightless. All right, let's head on in here. I definitely disturb some. Cast in here and throw in this little spot. I see one. Oh, he's all over it. Oh gosh. That's that was like too easy. 
Try not to dirty them up too much in this mud. It's probably the size we're dealing with. That's what I see on the bank, but we'll see. Dang, that was, that was cool. Crushed it. By the way, in our t-shirt of the month club, the t-shirt that I'm wearing right now is, is part of it. It's one of the uh, few times I've been complimented leaving the house on my shirt by my wife. She was like, hey, I really like that shirt. I was like, thank you, honey. Shirt of the month club. But shirt of the month club also came with uh, some crack and craws with the right hook for it. That one I was just throwing, just one size smaller. It's the crack and hook. Oh man, that bug was pretty sweet. I might throw on a grub. This looks like a little crawfish invader. You could also, I'm willing to bet, you could fish this like a buzz toad. Like a miniature slender buzz toad. You could also just uh, kind of reel and stop this thing. Crawfish just kind of scooting and then it stops and it's sinking. Throw up on this flat, see if there's anything cruising in this flat. Oh, yeah, I see some fish. Oh, there's one. Oh, dang it. Oh, that one got it. Oh, that was cool. He ate it like a top water. Get out of that grass. Get out of that grass. 12 pound. Y'all need some extra protein in here, son. Let them go, let them grow. Okay, that's a thing. This love, this love grub is pretty cool. I mean, it's awesome on a jig trailer, but so many things you can do with a grub. Fish at Texas Rig, you can swim it over grass. Fish it like a topwater, see if I can get one to uh, come all the way up and tag it on top. Might be a little chilly still. Oh, no, no it's not. Oh my God. Okay, that answers that. I was gonna say, what's nice about this over a buzz toad is that you've got a real thin plastic set of a toad that's pretty thick, so you get a good hook set, but I just lost that one. Of course, I'm fishing on medium heavy, lighter line. That's pretty sick though. Looks like there's a bunch, bunch of fish just cruising the top. In the shallows right here for some gill action, maybe. Oh, another top water strike. That's awesome. Wow. See, this, this is not even the pond I really wanted to fish. Just stopped at this one because I saw some fish swimming around. I'm going to grab a bait. I might as well just put some in my buckets. Found me a whole pack of grubs. Cannot deny green pump. Greatest color of all time for a variety of different water clarities. There's a cruiser, little cruiser buddy. Lots of cruisers. Oh my gosh. Okay. Okay. Wish I had some braid. Man, I lost a, uh, I lost a tail on that fish and this thing's still kicking. Still kicking good. 
See if I can get a one-legged love grub bite. Right on that grass edge, they get feisty. Oh my gosh, that one little guy. That one came out of no man's land like a torpedo. Smashed it. Yeah, just gotta let them eat it. They're so small. Buddy. Sorry I had to do that to you. You ate it with such aggression. Alright, I'm going to give you guys a tip for fishing in this grassy, this snaggy stuff. So, I tie a uni knot most of the time because I love the strength, especially fishing fluorocarbon. And many of you may already tie this knot. I first learned it I believe it was called a trilene knot. But with the uni knot, you have a tag in that sticks out towards your main line. So with this knot, you go up, you make some twists on top of a loop. So I got a loop right there where my middle finger is. Make about seven twist around the line, I'll take my tag and come back through the loop where my middle finger is, then I'll slide that down, wet it, sort of work it, and then pull it, pull it tight. And now my tag end is facing towards the bait. So I've started doing this on my swim jigs and any weightless plastic that I am fishing in, in grass like that because that that tag in will catch on the grass it'll snag it but with this knot you won't snag the grass as much if you're fishing braid it really doesn't matter because the braid's soft oh there's one. Oh gosh that was a good hit too a decent boil like that could have been over 12 inches another one grabbed it oh serious That knot will keep some of that snotty grass and hairy grass from grabbing onto your, your line and ruining your, your good cast that you just worked on. There's one, come on. Get out of there. It's a Bob Marley, just full of grass. Grass weighs more than the fish. Oh yeah, buddy, they are in here. Fishing is good. I mean, it's untapped. You know, no one's fished this in over a year, and it barely gets fished anyway. I'm pretty sure if you threw a corn cob out there, they'd eat it, but. I'm gonna drive the ATV over here to this other edge where I've seen a lot of boils. Let's see if we can get a couple more over there and then we'll travel to the other pond. activity over here on this side, on the sunny side, surprisingly. There's 
one. He got it. He's running with it. Whoa, man. She broke my line. Well, that just shows you. If you let a little one swallow it, and you can give them the massive hook set. They can still break it off. That's another reason I don't prefer that knot that I showed you, but it does keep you out of the grass pretty good. But I have no business fishing this light of line in here. So one more time with this with this knot. And there's actually another way to tie it. I'm gonna show you the other way. Make it a little stronger. You go through this eye once more. Okay. So you got a loop there already. And you'll make your seven twists. guessed it we'll go through both of those loops now it's real important to hydrate this knot as you're tightening it this is why it loses strength it's because of the heat friction that you put on this whereas a uni knot there's almost you get really like 90% of the line strength this one's probably 80 or less. Just heard a turkey gobble. But we are not going to worry about that today. All right, so we got no knot coming out the front there. We've covered it up with the plastic, but we've also got no tag in sticking up. So now I should be able to just reel this thing on top no grass interference Kablink. had one follow it right there he wanted a taste one just boiled on it bumped it that one ate it Bunch of these little buddies around here. Oh, he got it. Oh, he doesn't come off. He don't, he don't dig out again. Come here. Oh, God. Hey. Oh. Samsonite. Just heard another turkey. All right. Turkey alarm. It's time to go to the next spot. Look at that guys, mesquite thorn injury. Doesn't look like much, but mesquites are painful. Smash that like button because I'm just, I'm hurting out here. I'm hurting. <laughs> Round number two. Let's stick with my same little program here, I think. But it looks like very clear, similar situation, just hopefully bigger bass. It's a dinosaur bone. Big find of the day. Probably from a cattle source rex. Alright, let's see what we got here. Let's go straight for the kill. There's one. Oh, it come off. Couldn't catch up to him. I was gonna just start straight reeling it on top. That one hit its subsurface though.
There we go. A little bit bigger. Yeah, get a little bit bigger. I'm gonna tear up my plastics every time on these micros. I'm really liking that grub, but I don't think I have many. Grab a couple of blazons. Water is definitely down. It's usually right up here where I'm walking. I'm just gonna start casting with this little bottleneck. There we go. We got a runner. Oh. And he was not big. I know if I throw the blazing worm, it's gonna have the same effect. I could reel it on top like this and just work it under the surface, but it's just longer. I know I'm gonna get some butt chewers. I think it was two years ago I came out here and pretty much everything was dead. So I don't even know if I'm decent fishing here anymore. Gonna find out though. Make a few more casts. Evening casts. There's one. Oh, took my whole nugget. It's time to get blazing. Well, regardless, y'all, this is fun. It's fun getting this many bites, that's for sure. Blazing worm is really nasty for these shallow. Oh, right away. That's a better one. Come here. Don't get off. God damn it. Oh, that was a better one. I'm not just saying it. I promise you. It's that first cast in an area, reeling it on top. They just come and smack it. It's like it's a dragonfly. They eat a lot of dragonflies out here, it looks like whatever's hitting the surface in that area. Ah, it's a little one. Didn't even step the hook on him when I got him. Definitely a bigger fill, oh, yeah. Shoot, this is a good one. There we go. Hey, they do exist. Got some of that other one I had. I missed it, or I lost him. That's a better fish. That was cool, I watched him wake behind it and I stopped it. And he ate it. You were tailing it, tracking it, and had to have it. You were not coming off. I had him in like the the jawbone. There we go. Post spawn fish, skinny, but really awesome. Awesome, awesome strike. See you, buddy. Ooh, got me wet. Love it. All right, blazing worm for a bigger bite. I've got a bunch more in that bag, but the sun's going down. We got to load up ATV at home tonight. Just want one more decent one. There's, there's a good hit. Come on. Yeah. Not terrible. Out you go, man. He had the had that worm 
down his throat. This is such a fun worm to fish. It's like you're fishing a spinnerbait. Like you could fish it like a spinnerbait, or you can stop it, you know, work it just like you would a regular worm. All right, we need to rally fish sometimes. This has to be done, y'all. I got a perfectly good worm right there, but I'm gonna take it off. I'm gonna put a fresh, greasy one on. It's got all the juices on it. It's ready to go. Real important when you rig these worms too to make sure they're straight. I didn't get that one absolute. Try to get that as straight as possible so it's not twisting when you're swimming it. Definitely don't want to twist. You just want that tail kicking. I saw somebody over here. Oh yeah, you're kicking good. Putting out the scent. Right there. Oh, he ate the tail. Reaction. Got him. Yes. Don't care how small you are. That was cool. All right, I'm gonna end on that one. Fresh worm rally. Wabam. You can save that bait right there. Throw it on a wacky rig. Catch some more. You want to get. Real uh, Armageddon technical, whatever that means. Central Texas landscape. We're loaded up, ready to go. Fun times fishing out here. We got the ATV back and running. Did not find any sheds, but we did catch a lot of bass. Probably as many bass as I've ever caught out here. Just most of them are small. The first time I swam a plastic uh, many years ago, and I, I, I was just by accident reeling it in to make another cast, got bit. And it's like now through the summer where that, that thing is good. I'm telling you, it's great. It's great in those grassy lakes and ponds, rivers. So if you've never tried it, swimming a plastic, it'd be, it can be a creature bait, like a crawl, uh, or like the worm that I showed you guys. Really good technique. Of course, buzz toads. Of course, everybody thinks about summer grass, buzz toads. But you can start doing it right now. Right now, as soon as they're done spawning, uh, it is a great technique. So give it a shot. I've heard those turkeys calling this evening. I've heard them gobbling over, over the ridge here, but I'm going to get right back on the bass game. I'm going to let the turkeys just be turkeys. So smash the like button, subscribe, get outdoors. See you guys on the next one.